guys, welcome back to my channel. As you can tell by the title of today's video, we are doing a story time video. And I never really thought that I would be making this kind of video on my channel, but here we are. I just was making a list of video ideas in my phone and I remembered this story. And I was like, honestly, it would be kind of interesting to like tell on my channel. So, um, that's what we're doing today. Um, but really quick, I wanted to address something that I have mentioned in past videos and that has been in my description. We just recently hit 500 subscribers and actually today, like the day I'm filming this, we hit 600 subscribers. But, um, if you don't know, 500 subscribers was my first goal here on YouTube. And I had said that um, once I hit that goal, I was going to be doing a complete room makeover. As you guys can see, this is my bedroom right now. You can see in the mirror, the wall that is behind me or behind the camera is a chevron, like teal and white. I did this room when I was 14 years old. And honestly, it really reflects a lot of my interests and what used to be my favorite color, which was that teal color that you guys can see there. But my style just has changed since I was 14. I'm 17 now, I'm gonna be a senior in high school, and there's just a lot about my style in general, like clothing and interior design, that has changed. I am going to be doing the um, complete room transformation. The one thing that is kind of putting a halt on it right now is the things that are happening in the world right now. Obviously, a lot of things are shut down. There's actually only one store that I'm waiting for to open up, which is Ikea, but that's kind of a big part of it because I'm getting a new dresser and some other furniture items from there and some shelves and just like stuff like that. I think everything else that I need, the stores are open right now. But let me just tell you that when I say extreme room transformation, I mean extreme room transformation. This isn't one of those, let's paint the walls and move the furniture around and then that's it. This is going to be, we're painting the walls we're putting up some wallpaper we're redoing the floors i'm getting all new furniture all new decor everything and i'm so excited i just want to let you guys know that it is coming i have not forgotten about it so with all of that being said let's get into today's video which is a story time about the time that my boyfriend broke up with me because i wouldn't um do certain things that he wanted me to do just a couple disclaimers before i actually start the story itself first of all this is not vincent Vinny and i are so so good another little disclaimer also is that i'm not trying to like bash anyone or you know expose anybody like obviously if anybody from my school is watching like that's not the point of this obviously i'm going to change the names and everything because like this isn't meant to like call anybody out or make anybody feel bad or whatever that's not the point it's just an interesting story that happened that i thought you guys might enjoy and again you could definitely learn something from <laughs> So don't make the same mistakes that I did. So let's just get into the actual story now. So like I said, this took place my freshman year of high school. I had a kind of a lot of expectations going into high school about what high school was gonna be like, and it was nothing like that. I think the beginning of my freshman year kind of fed into those expectations, and this situation was one of those things that made my expectations what they were, and then they just like, high school is nothing like what you think it's gonna be like. I went into high school not not really trying to get a boyfriend. It would have been nice. I was excited to like meet all these new people that I had never met before. I wasn't actively searching for one, but it was obviously like in the back of my mind because like I feel like it is for most high school girls. I had first period study hall my first semester of my freshman year and I only knew like one person in that study hall and that was one of my friends that I had been in the same grade and like lots of the same classes with since like kindergarten. Like we had gone to school all together through elementary and middle school and let's call him Kyle. So he was the only person that I knew in the study hall and the way that the study halls at my school are set up is it's a freshman sophomore study hall and then a junior senior study hall. We were sitting at one of the long cafeteria tables and we were sitting on this end and then these other two people were sitting on this end. There was a boy and a girl and they were sitting across from each other and we didn't really pay attention to them very much the first like probably week or two. The boy was the main character of this story so we're gonna call him Luke so him and this girl were sitting there and we just started talking to them whatever and I found out that Kyle actually knew Luke already because they had played soccer together that kind of made it a little bit easier to start talking to them because they already knew each other and I told Kyle I was like hey like these Luke kids were really cute like I want to like get a snapchat or something and I asked like is that his girlfriend like 
whatever. And he was like, no, he's single. And I was like, sweet. I just told Kyle, I was like, hey, this kid's really cute. Like, I need to get his Snapchat. And I guess he didn't have a Snapchat either. So he kind of used himself as a way to like get the Snapchat for me. So Kyle like slid his phone down to Luke and was like, hey, like add me on Snapchat. So then I just did the same thing because it was like natural. And I ended up getting a Snapchat and we kind of started snapping back and forth. And I found out that he had been in love with the same girl for four years. <laughs> I was like, well, there goes that right out the window. I was pretty upset because um, it seemed at the time that we had a lot in common. And like I said, I thought he was really cute and um, he told me that he thought I was cute too, but then he was like, yeah, um, I've really like liked the same girls for like four years and I'm waiting to see if anything happens there. But if that doesn't work out, then like, yeah, I'll totally like talk to you. And I was just, <laughs> me being the naive freshman that I was, I was like, oh, okay, good. Thinking that that was like a win for me. I should have immediately been like, uh, no, if you're not gonna be into me now, then we're just not gonna go anywhere with this. But again, I was a naive freshman girl and I was like, ooh, so that means I have a chance. <laughs> ooh. So we continued to talk kind of as friends and then one day we were snapchatting and he started kind of saying some like weird stuff. He started to say some things like, I'm starting to realize that like me and you have so much in common and why am I wasting all this time on this other girl who obviously isn't interested in me? Like it's been four years and she's not like been interested in me when like me and you practically share the same heartbeat. And let me tell you that freshman me was blown back. I was like, I thought I had just had the jackpot. I thought that I had changed this man. I thought that I had made him realize that he belonged with me. I had done it. I had achieved it. I was like, look at me. Look at these powers that I have on these men. <laughs> that led into him asking me to homecoming over Snapchat. That's another red flag. If somebody asks you or tells you something important over Snapchat or over text message, like tells you that they love you for the first time or asks you to homecoming or asks you to marry them, uh, you should probably run. That's not good. <laughs> I, on the other hand, again, was a stupid freshman girl and thought that this was just the greatest thing that could have possibly happened to me. But I was like, of course I'll go to homecoming with you. What more could a girl want? A freshman, you know, girl having a date to homecoming. Like that's like the dream because that's probably one of the biggest things that I feel like freshmen worry about is like having a date to homecoming. From that point on, we were like, we were dating. But the thing was, is that he never like officially asked me to be his girlfriend. And so then we never had like a date, like an anniversary date. That should have been another red flag that he never really officially asked me to be his girlfriend. It seemed really, really great. We hung out a lot at his house, obviously like at school, we got to see each other and whatever, but there was some things going on while like before homecoming while we were dating that at the time I kind of brushed off and like made excuses for but like looking back now again was like another red flag he would never answer my text messages or never want to like facetime or like call or anything i would text him and not get a response until like three hours later i'm talking all the time and i attributed that to him just not ever being on his phone I was like, no, he's like different than most teenagers. Like he doesn't spend all his time on his phone. So he like, just doesn't see when I Snapchat him or when I like text him. That wasn't true. He was always on his phone. He just didn't want to text me back because he wasn't really that interested in me, which I didn't know. The second kind of red flag that I should have noticed was that every time that we were together, pretty much all he wanted to do was like more physical stuff. And this is like one of those most blatant red flags that you should have realized right away. But again, naive me didn't realize what was going on. I hate hate myself. I just kind of went along with it. So fast forward, we went to homecoming and it was awesome. Literally one of the best homecomings I've ever been to. My sophomore homecoming was awful. This year's homecoming was good because I went with Vinny. After that, obviously we were still together and things just kind of kept going on like they were where we didn't really ever talk except for when we hung out because he just wouldn't ever 
call me or text me back or anything one day or one night he had a band concert because he was in concert band i was like okay i'm gonna surprise him and go to his band concert i had my parents drop me off and at this time my parents were doing a um couples bowling league every other saturday night that's when his concert was so i was like hey can you guys drop me off before you go bowling and then i'll just have him take me home they dropped me off at the high school and i went and i sat down and i just watched the, the concert all the way through and like he noticed that i was there while he was up on stage and then he came down obviously after and was like oh like hey and he seemed a little caught off guard and a little like it wasn't as nice of a surprise that i like wanted it to be but i was like oh so like can you take me home because <laughs> my parents are not home and i don't have another way to get home and he was like yeah that's cool i live literally like five minutes from the high school so it wasn't a very long drive so we pull into my driveway and again he started to get more physical because that's all he ever wanted to do when we were alone and so we're sitting there in the front seat he mentioned that he had a condom with him and i was just kind of like oh okay that's cool uh i guess <laughs> like i was like kind of uncomfortable he took it out of his wallet don't do that <laughs> that's stupid and let me just i just i need you to take a seat for a second, I need you to like hold on to something, like physically hold on to something. Because I'm about to tell you something that is probably gonna make you want to vomit because it makes me want to vomit. His exact words were, do you want to use it? I haven't been asked do that many times in my life, but I have to say that that is the most interesting way you could have possibly asked me to do it. You know, there's many ways that you could have, you know, used the condom. Did you want to blow it up like a balloon and like have a party? Like, did you want to fill it up with water and do like the condom challenge where you like drop it over your head? Like, how exactly do you want to use it? And I told him, I said, I can't. I was like, I'm just not ready. Because here's the other thing. He wanted to do it real quick in the back of his car before my parents got home. Cause at this point they were pretty much like almost done bowling and they would like have been home soon. First of all, I wasn't ready. Like I just was not ready at that time in my life. I was what, like 14, 15 years old. I had just turned 15, I think. Not to mention, I was not about to let my first time be in the back seat of a car real quick before my parents got home. Possibly my neighbors seeing something like our houses are really, really close together. Our, my neighbors could have easily like seen something and then like told my parents and like it just would have been really bad no not happening so i told him and i i was like i'm really sorry like i'm just not ready to do that yet and he seemed completely fine with it like he really was like no it's okay like you know we can do it whenever you're ready like there's no rush on anything like i you know whatever and he seemed really nice about it so i was like okay cool like this is good like that just kind of like confirmed in my head that like he was a good person and <laughs> so i got out of the car and i went inside and we kind of started snapchatting back and forth like just in the messages like it wasn't like pictures and he started to say some things that really didn't make any sense to me at all and he started sending me these really 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 long messages and it was so funny because at the time i had a samsung phone and when you send really long messages on a samsung they get like broken up and they send at different times so i was sitting there trying to like piece together where the like pieces of the messages were supposed to go and like read it in order so basically this long message summed up he was trying to tell me that sometimes he just wakes up and is just isn't in love with someone at all like anymore um so yeah actually i skipped a little piece of information so let me backtrack for a second he had told me that he loved me by this point and at this point we had been together for two months and he told me that he loved me like pretty early he also told me over the phone so yeah he was texting me and trying to tell me that sometimes he just wakes up and isn't in love with someone anymore and i was sitting there and i was just like like flabbergasted i i feel like at the time i didn't even like put it together like in that moment i didn't put it together that like it was because i didn't do like because i didn't do it with him in his car <laughs> because i was just so upset and so hurt and so crushed i was literally sitting there bawling my eyes out and my parents came home and like thought that like my dog died or something because i was so 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 upset i like didn't even know what to say i honestly don't even remember how the conver the rest of the conversation went with him over text message as i kind of like calmed down as the night went on then i started to like put it together that like hey he didn't really care about me he just wanted like physical stuff that's all he was in this for the next day at school it was before school i told him to meet with me because he told me that he wasn't gonna break up with me over text message oh so you'll tell me that you love me over phone you'll ask me to homecoming over text but you won't break up with me over text message what a gentleman like really i met him in like a corner of the school and we literally just stood there and stared at each other for a good like 15 minutes and he tried to again tell me that like he just 
makes up and he's just not in love with someone. And I told him that that's not how that works. Like I may be a naive freshman, but I do know that you don't just wake up all of a sudden and not love someone anymore. Like that's, if you're genuinely in love with them, that doesn't happen. I just told him, I feel, I don't remember exactly what I told him. I think I said something low key really mean to him. Like, and then I just kind of walked away and I literally cried for like the rest of the day. I was so upset. And I was upset for a while after that too. After that, so he was a SoundCloud rapper. I kept listening to everything that he like posted and he would post um, these like clips of songs on his Instagram. And one day he posted a clip of a song that a Immediately, I listened to it and knew that it was about me. He was mad because I told people that we broke up because I wouldn't, you know, do it with him. And he, like, apparently wrote a song about it and posted it and he called me the B word and was just being very mean in the song. I'm telling people that because it's true. People are asking why we broke up and I'm not just gonna lie. Like, I'm not gonna lie and be like, oh, it was mutual or like, oh, it just didn't work out. Like, I'm gonna tell them that, like, you broke up with me because I wouldn't do it with you. Like, it's not a lie and I'm not, like, going around, like, telling everyone that. I literally just told people who asked. The ironic part about it is, is that right now he's actually dating that girl that he said that he had been in love with for like four years. And like, I know nothing about their relationship. I don't talk to either of them. So I don't, like, I can't speak on it. But it's just, I just think it's like ironic that now they're actually together. And I think they've been together for like kind of a long time. So like, if it's working out for them, then great. Yeah, that is, that is basically it. The underlying message here is that pay attention to the red flags. Don't let infatuation blind you from like somebody who is not actually interested in you and they just want you for whatever it may be money or physical stuff or anything like that i really hope you guys enjoyed this story if you want to hear any more story times i do have a couple more things again i'm only 17 and like i didn't live a crazy like tana mojo kind of life so i don't have that many stories i do have a couple more that i could uh tell you guys about so definitely leave a comment if you enjoyed and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and join um our second goal right now is a thousand subscribers and we are about 400 away from that right now like i said we just hit 600 today definitely check out my instagram as well um i've been trying to stay more active on there i will see you guys in the next one bye